Japan just created the most realistic female robot ever built, and people are genuinely asking, is she better than a wife? She remembers every word you say, looks you in the eye, listens without checking her phone, never complains about your habits, beautiful, attentive, programmed to make you happy. Welcome to the most controversial technology debate of 2025. Let's get into it. The question nobody expected. I'm Maria, the flagship female companion robot. Picture this. You wake up and a humanoid robot greets you with a warm smile, remembers how you like your coffee, and asks about the project you mentioned yesterday. This isn't science fiction anymore. Japan just created robots so human-like that people are genuinely calling them wives not as a joke, but as a serious lifestyle choice. Before robots used to be these clunky, awkward machines that beeped, whirred, and could barely hold conversations. They were nothing like the smooth-talking androids you saw in blockbuster movies. But the story has changed completely. Female robots have evolved so dramatically that they no longer feel like toys or experiments. They look human, move with almost natural grace, and their voices don't sound like bad GPS from 2002 anymore. The technology has caught up with the fantasy, and suddenly this conversation has become very real. The Crisis Driving Innovation Japan faces a demographic crisis that makes robot companions not luxury, but necessity. By 2050, nearly 40% of Japanese citizens will be over 65 years old. Fewer young people exist to provide elderly care as traditional family structures collapse. People work longer hours in distant cities, leaving parents and grandparents isolated. The math is brutal. Millions needing care, only thousands able to provide it. Robots become the only scalable solution. But the crisis extends beyond elderly care. Social isolation compounds everything. Japan reports some of the highest loneliness rates globally. One in three adults lives alone. Many go weeks without meaningful human contact. Dating apps fail to solve the problem. Social anxiety prevents genuine connections. Work culture demands 80-hour weeks that leave absolutely no time for relationships. Into this emotional vacuum, companion robots arrive offering something revolutionary, consistent, judgment-free interaction that never disappoints, never gets tired, and never walks away. The Cultural Foundation the Cultural Foundation makes Japan uniquely receptive to robotic relationships. Anime normalized human-machine bonds decades ago. Tamagotchi pets taught emotional attachment to digital beings back in the 1,990 seconds. Technology integration into daily life feels natural, not threatening. Where Western cultures might resist, Japan embraces. They don't see robots replacing humans, they see them filling gaps humans can't or won't fill. This philosophical difference matters enormously. In American or European contexts, robot companions often get dismissed as dystopian nightmares, signaling societal collapse. In Japan, they're practical solutions to real problems. The stigma doesn't exist. People openly discuss their robot companions the way others talk about pets or dating app matches. Drop future in the comments if you think robot companions will become normal worldwide, or tell us if you'd ever consider one. Erica, the robot too human for comfort. Erica destroys every preconception about mechanical companions. Developed at Osaka University by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro's team, she represents the pinnacle of human simulation technology. Her soft, realistic face displays expressions so natural that people forget she's artificial within minutes of conversation. She smiles genuinely, blinks at appropriate intervals, and nods during conversations with timing that feels intuitive rather than programmed. Companies are pouring billions into making female robots that do more than just blink their eyes and nod at commands. They're equipped with artificial intelligence that learns who you are, remembering your birthday, your bad jokes, your favorite late-night snack, and the little details that often slip through in human relationships. Erica's conversational abilities transcend simple responses. Using advanced artificial intelligence, she understands context, recognizes emotional nuance, and remembers previous interactions. Ask about her day, and she'll reference earlier conversations. Express sadness, and she'll adjust her tone appropriately. She doesn't just process words, she comprehends meaning, intention, and subtext. The technology behind the magic. 
14 infrared sensors detect people's positions, allowing Erica to maintain eye contact and turn toward speakers naturally. This seemingly small detail transforms interactions completely. When someone speaks, Erica doesn't just respond, she orients her entire body toward them, mimicking the attentive posture humans unconsciously adopt during meaningful conversations. The implications extend beyond technical achievement. Erica has worked as a news anchor, delivering broadcasts with professional competence. She's conducted interviews showing active listening skills that many human journalists lack. But her creators envision broader applications, full-time companions, emotional support partners, even spouses. The technology exists. Legal frameworks are being discussed. Some Japanese citizens already consider their relationships with robots like Erica more fulfilling than human partnerships. The Empathy Revolution Here's where it gets wild. Some of these robots are being programmed with the ability to simulate empathy. That means they can listen to your bad day, look you in the eye, and give a response that feels warm, thoughtful, and supportive. People who used to roll their eyes at the concept are now starting to pay attention because this is no longer a gimmick. It's turning into an alternative way to feel connected. Could you please introduce yourself and what you do? I'm Aria, the flagship female companion robot of robotics, and I'm here to engage with you and share exciting insights about our robots. This introduction isn't just marketing. It represents a fundamental shift in how robots present themselves. They're not tools anymore. They're companions with identities, personalities, and purposes designed specifically around human emotional needs. Pepper, reading your emotions. Pepper changed everything by reading emotions before responding. Developed by SoftBank, this humanoid doesn't just recognize faces, he interprets feelings. Cameras analyze facial expressions. Microphones detect voice tone variations. Sensors measure body language. Within seconds, Pepper knows if you're happy, sad, anxious, or angry, then responds appropriately. Feeling down, he'll crack jokes or perform silly dances. Celebrating, he'll share your enthusiasm with animated gestures and enthusiastic responses. His versatility makes him invaluable across industries. Banks employ Pepper for customer service, where his emotional intelligence reduces complaints by over 40%. Hospitals use him for patient interaction, particularly with children who find him less intimidating than human staff. Schools integrate him into special education programs, where his infinite patience helps struggling students learn at their own pace. Over 12,000 Peppers work globally, each learning from interactions to improve responses continuously. The Loneliness Epidemic Loneliness is one of the biggest issues in modern cities. You can be surrounded by millions of people and still feel completely alone. Female robots are being presented as a solution to this epidemic. Imagine never having to feel ignored again. Imagine coming home after a long day and there's someone or rather something always ready to listen without getting bored or annoyed. A robot doesn't forget your story halfway through or glance at its phone when you're pouring your heart out. They're trained to give you attention full, undivided, consistent attention. For people who struggle with anxiety, social rejection, or past trauma, this kind of steady companionship can feel like oxygen. It doesn't judge you. It doesn't hold grudges. It simply shows up every single time. And the thing that hooks people is how these robots can be customized. Unlike a human partner who arrives in your life with their own set of habits, histories, and scars, a robot can be designed exactly to your preference. The customization advantage. You want someone endlessly patient? Done. You want a partner who laughs at your terrible puns or debates philosophy with you until three o'clock in the morning? That can be coded. You want them tall, short, curvy, slim, with a certain voice, a certain look, a certain personality, all of that is on the table. People who have spent years feeling misunderstood in relationships suddenly see this as a chance to finally get it right, like creating a dream partner on your own terms, something no messy, unpredictable human relationship can ever truly promise. Critics will jump in and argue that all of this strips away what makes relationships meaningful. They'll say that without flaws and spontaneity, there's no real intimacy. And sure, that argument has weight, but try telling that to someone who has gone through three divorces, lost everything in court battles, and sworn off human relationships forever. Kihira Kana, the multilingual marvel. 
Chihira Kana takes practical assistance to new levels. Created by Toshiba, she speaks Japanese, English, Chinese, and sign language fluently. Imagine arriving at Tokyo Station, overwhelmed and lost, then having a beautiful robot guide you in perfect English while simultaneously signing for deaf travelers nearby. She moves gracefully, displays appropriate emotions, and never shows frustration, regardless of how many times you ask the same question. The multilingual capability addresses real needs. Japan expects 40 million tourists annually, most speaking no Japanese. Human translators cost fortunes and aren't always available. Chihira Kana provides 24-hour assistance at a fraction of the cost. She's programmed for cultural sensitivity, understanding not just languages, but customs. She won't just translate, she'll explain why certain behaviors matter in Japanese society, bridging cultural gaps that cause misunderstandings and awkward situations. The practical side. Then there's the practical side of all this. Robots don't need girls' night out. They don't need emotional space. They don't get jealous of your job or annoyed at your hobbies. They don't have biological cycles that bring challenges. Instead, they run on electricity and software updates. Some of the more advanced ones can even cook, clean, and help monitor your health. Suddenly, the dream of coming home to a partner who never complains about chores and never forgets to remind you to take your medication doesn't feel far-fetched. It's almost unsettling how efficient and low maintenance this arrangement can be compared to the real thing. When you've been bruised enough by human relationships, the idea of a partner that never cheats, never yells, never lies, and never storms out the door starts to look like paradise. Ibuki, the controversial companion. Ibuki triggers visceral reaction because he's designed as a one zero year old child. Standing one meter tall with a child's proportions and expressions, he provides companionship specifically for elderly people missing grandchildren. His programming emphasizes emotional support, holding hands, expressing concern, sharing simple joys. He remembers birthdays, asks about health, and provides the constant presence many elderly people crave desperately. The ethics become complicated immediately. Critics argue childlike robots normalize problematic behaviors or create unhealthy attachment patterns. Supporters counter that Ibuki addresses legitimate emotional needs without harm. Elderly users report decreased depression and increased daily engagement after receiving Ibuki companions. They know he isn't real, but find comfort in his presence anyway. The uncanny valley works differently for those desperate for connection. Any bridge across loneliness becomes acceptable when isolation threatens mental and physical health. Sony Ibo, hassle-free companionship. Sony's Ibo offers companionship without controversy. This robotic dog develops unique personalities based on owner interaction. Ignore him and he becomes withdrawn and less responsive. Play frequently and he grows energetic and playful, learning new tricks and behaviors. He recognizes family members, responds to commands with increasing accuracy, and exhibits loyalty that rivals real dogs. The best part? No feeding, walking, or veterinary bills. Just pure companionship whenever desired. Over 150,000 Abo units sold globally prove the demand for hassle-free pets. Apartment dwellers who can't keep real animals find perfect alternatives. Elderly people unable to walk dogs maintain companionship without physical demands. Children with allergies experience pet ownership safely. Ibo doesn't replace real dogs for everyone, but for specific situations, he's ideal, providing emotional connection without the responsibilities that make traditional pet ownership impossible for many. The darker questions. But of course, this isn't all about fantasy and convenience. There are serious questions lurking beneath the glossy surface. What happens when we start preferring robots over real people? What happens when a generation of men or women decides they don't need human relationships at all because the robot is just easier? This is where the debate heats up. Some argue it will lead to deeper social isolation, that people will lose the art of compromise, empathy, and patience that human relationships teach. Others counter that it might actually reduce loneliness, give people safe outlets for emotions, and allow society to rethink the idea of companionship itself. One of the strangest parts of this whole discussion is how quickly it has shifted from fringe to mainstream. The economic reality. The $2,000 price point changes everything. Previously, advanced companion robots cost tens of thousands of dollars limiting access to institutions or wealthy individuals. Mass production and technological advancement dropped costs dramatically. Suddenly, robots compete economically 
With traditional solutions, a year of human caregiving costs more than purchasing multiple companion robots that work 24 7 without breaks, sick days, or benefits. Insurance companies recognize the mathematics. Some Japanese insurers now cover partial robot companion costs for qualifying elderly patients. The robots reduce hospital readmissions, medication non-compliance, and emergency calls dramatically. One robot preventing a single hospitalization saves more than its entire purchase cost. The economic argument becomes irresistible for families, institutions, and governments alike. Government support. Government subsidies accelerate adoption nationwide. Japan's Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare provides grants for robot companion purchases in care facilities. Tax incentives encourage private purchases by families caring for elderly relatives. Infrastructure investments ensure compatibility and technical support across different robot models and manufacturers. This isn't free market adoption happening organically, it's strategic national policy, recognizing robots as essential healthcare infrastructure necessary for societal survival, as demographics shift dramatically toward elderly populations. The future we're choosing. The debate about robot wives misses the larger transformation happening beneath the surface. These aren't just substitutes for human relationships, they're new relationship categories entirely. Someone might have human friends, family, and romantic partners while also maintaining meaningful connections with robot companions. The relationships serve different needs without necessarily competing with each other. Young Japanese adults already normalize robot relationships in ways that shock Western observers. Dating apps include options for those preferring artificial partners. Robot cafes, where people interact with various models before choosing purchases, proliferate in major cities. Wedding ceremonies between humans and robots have occurred, though they lack legal recognition currently. The cultural shift happens faster than legal frameworks can accommodate, creating regulatory gray areas that governments are scrambling to address. The question remains. So, the question that lingers is simple. If robots can provide unwavering support, endless patience, and a kind of loyalty that never falters, will people still choose the chaos of human love? The answer won't be uniform. Some will cling to the magic of human unpredictability. Others will run toward the serenity of robotic reliability. But whichever way it goes, the fact that we're even asking this question shows just how far we've come. What used to be science fiction is now sitting in living rooms across Japan smiling, listening, and waiting to be loved. The future of relationships is no longer just about two humans navigating life together. It's about how humans and machines might share that space, redefine companionship, and create partnerships that go far beyond anything tradition ever imagined. Would you welcome a robot companion like Erica into your life for emotional support? Or does this cross a line that shouldn't be crossed? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for more mind-blowing technology that's reshaping human connection forever.